our cockpit floor never drained fast or completely enough. So we are going to add this big fiberglass and foam wedge to help get the water out. Hello, we are Patrick and Rebecca Childress on the Valiant 40 Brick House. We have been hauled out in Richards Bay, South Africa, and we are getting our boat ready to head down to Tierra del Fuego, only because we have nowhere else to go, and that's a cool sounding name. But first, there's more work we have to do to get this boat ready to cross oceans. After seven months of being hauled out of the water and all the major projects out of the way, now that we're back in the water and at a dock, I can take care of some of the smaller but equally important jobs like adding slope, a little extra pitch to the cockpit floor. So let's go up to Hayden's shop and just jump right into making the foam panel fiberglassed on one side that'll give us that pitch. Okay, we're going to come in here and see Hayden Hector one of the local contractors. Hey there, Hayden, how you doing? Get in here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so today's the day we make a panel. Yeah. It's for, for my floor. That's it. And it'll be set up on this big glass sheet. My laminating table, I call it. <laughs> okay. And the first step is going to be what? Putting a couple of coats of ram wax on, slicking relief ram wax on the table. So your man is going to be putting on wax, wax the glass table, and how many coats will he be putting on? We'll be putting three coats of brown wax on. And then start the layup. So what you've already done is taken two pieces of foam and joined them. That's correct. And what did you join it with? We just, I just used hot glue to, to join the, the foam together. So I put a hot glue gun uh -huh. um, and then yeah, glue it together. Just gonna hold it together until the fiberglass cures on the lemon. Okay, that's quick hot glue. That's it. And it doesn't have to be any stronger than that? No, nope. once it's glassed in, it's as strong as it will That's where it gets its strength. Yeah, that's it. The fiberglass gives it the strength. All your the foam is doing is acting as a former. Uh -huh. Buffan has made hundreds of these fiberglass foam panels. And first he defines the area with blue tape so he knows exactly where to roll out the polyester resin and then lay down the pre-cut sections of chop strand mat and roving. Then it is a quick rollout of a thick layer of polyester resin. You can see how the, the resin is pulling away from the, the wax yeah. in, in some places. So that's because of the viscosity, the thinness of the resin, it can't hold to, to itself. Whereas with gel coat, it's much thicker. Oh, so okay. it will bind to itself and not allow it to almost fish out. You'd get a very similar thing with spray painted on a, on a waxy surface. Uh -huh. You know, you, you'd get your paint that would have the similar effect. The fan is using 450 gram, that's about 16 ounces, chopped strand mat. The next layer is woven roving, also 450 grams or about 16 ounces in imperial measure. Rather than dumping more resin on top of this roving, the fan is allowing the resin to soak up from the bottom upwards and that helps to push air and air bubbles out of the cloth. And then he rolls it out with a fin roller to help spread that resin and only when he needs to then applies more resin to the top of the cloth and then rolls that around to help make sure that all of the air bubbles come out. And now the final layer of chopped strand mat, oftentimes just called CSM. Charlie. The second Sarah layer Mike. of CSM is the same weight as the first layer. So now the foam board gets a good soaking of fiberglass resin before it gets turned over on top of the buildup of fiberglass layup. Now
to make sure that these cans of weights do not get glued to the new work, a slick sheet of plastic is used to separate the can from the fiberglass. So it's 8 o'clock in the morning. I can come back about 3 o'clock in the afternoon and pick up my new panel. Pulling the weights off of the panel, we can see how the fiberglass resin has migrated all the way up through all these little perforations, which are part of the structure of the panel. And so it isn't just a face adhesion. It is really a good bond all the way through the foam panel. how smooth that is. That is amazing. It's also, ideally, I like to leave it overnight. Mm -hmm. It's not like now if you take it, it's not it's fine, it's cured, but yeah. I just prefer to leave things overnight. Sure, yeah, get a good cure on it. And get it job. All right then, Hayden, what if on my panel, if I needed it for something else and I wanted it good on two sides, not just on one side? So that's obviously your laminate against the glass, gel coat finish. The other side is your second layer, as you can see with the cross section, it would be your bottom laminate with your foam, your foam core on, then you would do your second layer on top of that, consolidating with a seal steel roller, and then a layer of peel, your peel plant on top of that, which then gives you a prep surface. Okay, so you're not worried about squishing everything down and like a vacuum bag or you anything would, like if that? If you wanted to, you could vacuum bag it, but I don't do vacuum bagging on most of my panels. Mm -hmm. um, mainly panels I do are cosmetic panels. I don't really do structural panels. So as for structural p panels, if you're worried about strength and you had a spec to meet, obviously then the ideal way to go forward with that would be vacuum bagging to consolidate to 100%. Well, it seems like these are pretty darn strong as it is. I mean, laminating on two sides, um, even without vacuum bagging. Definitely gives strength. you your, your strength that you need for, for the application you're looking at. Okay, great. Hey, thanks. Fantastic. All right. So if you want to do this at home in your garage and you don't want to have to go through the big expense of a thick glass table, a piece of plastic laminate like Formica or Wilson Art, a nice shiny piece would be the best. Just lay it out on a good, solid, strong, flat table. And be sure to wax the surface with at least four coats of car wax, if not something better. And do your layup and then put the foam on top of that and weight it down the way that we did. But if you want good two sides and nice and shiny, you can go ahead and do your layup on top of that. And then, Take another piece of plastic laminate, lay it on top. Of course, after shining it up with a, about four or five coats of automotive wax. Then put a thick piece of flat plywood on top of that formica to help distribute the load evenly. And then weight it down. And I think that'll help to squish out any excess resin and make for a stronger product. And also give you a nice finish on top. If you're gonna be doing some laminating on that upper surface, of course, just like what Hayden showed us, you just put peel ply on top and that'll make it nice and flat and you could also still take a piece of formica on top then put a thick piece of flat plywood on top of that formica to help distribute the load evenly and weight that down on top of the peel ply to get a little squishy effect and squeeze out any excess resin that way as well either way I think it's going to come out pretty darn strong and it's a nice way to do it at home I think these homemade foam core panels are very good for cosmetics and partitions, but as far as using in a very high stress, high strength application, you're on your own to figure out that suitability. Now I have to make a template of the floor to transfer onto the panel. I use some corrugated plastic, it's easy to cut. Although the corrugations, because they all run parallel, sometimes it's hard to cut the proper straight line because the corrugations hold your knife in a direction that you really don't want to go. I'm going to clean all of this wax 
from the layup table off of here make sure that there's no speck of it even though I'm going to be sanding this I don't want to be sanding that wax into the rest of the surface so I'm using acetone to clean off that wax according to Hayden's directions using a fine metal cutting blade this is pretty easy stuff to cut Using 36 grit paper on the six inch disc sander, it makes it easy to fine tune the cuts and also round off the edges where it needs it. But even 24 grit in this big heavy sander hardly made a dent in this incredibly strong foam panel. That was a big surprise. So I had to get out the angle grinder with 16 grit paper and finally attack it with that. I had to stop every once in a while and check with a straight piece of aluminum for high spots. And then I would mark and attack those high spots with the 24 grit paper on the heavy disc sander. Once things were looking pretty good, then the big random orbit sander pretty well smoothed things out and gave the bevel that we were looking for. The panel has a very nice taper, a little more than an inch, a little more than 24 millimeters at its thickest end down to a knife edge at its bottom end. Then to prepare this panel for installation and tabbing in, all that beautiful, nice glass smooth shine had to be sanded off. 60 grit paper was used around the edges where the tabbing will go and then 80 grit inside the field where it's going to be painted. Nothing ever seems to fit right the first time. So with a little marking and then sanding with the disc sander and marking some more and sanding some more about four or five times, it was finally fitting the way it should so then it could be glued and tabbed in. But now we have to sand the floor and sand the sides of this cockpit and get everything ready for the permanent installation. First a good vacuuming and then a good wipe down with acetone and clean paper towels. Don't worry about what the rest of this cockpit looks like. All of this work is in anticipation of painting the entire cockpit a little later on. So then I mixed up a big batch of epoxy resin, thickened it up with cabosil, and then spread it around like butter all over the cockpit floor where this new panel is going to sit, and especially around the edges to help seal it up and get that ready for the tabbing. This was just the start of the weights placed on this floor to help hold it down overnight. Bricks, concrete, all kinds of things were set in here to give it a lot of pressure. So the next step was to thicken up some epoxy with some easy to sand filler, make a fillet, and then sand it so it'll be a nice curved section for the fiberglass cloth will easily fold in around these edges. And then it has to be sanded and fared and on and on and on. These drum sanders in the drill made it a lot easier to get that curved surface all the way around the perimeter of the floor. A lot easier than doing it by hand. Finally, after a lot of sanding and fairing and cleaning, I could lay in two layers of lightweight cloth. The first one was two and a half inches wide and the second layer would be four inches wide to fold in nicely around all of these curved surfaces and of course using epoxy resin. So I mixed up 300 grams of resin with slow hardener and that's a lot of resin but I worked just as quickly as I could. I got the two layers of glass down, started getting the peel ply in place and I could see oh no I'm losing the war because the resin just went off on me and so I didn't get the peel ply as saturated as I really felt I needed to but what else can you do? So we'll see what happens when we pull it up. Certainly there's going to be some fairing after all this is done. Oh, how nice. It's going to take some sanding and some fairing, but still not nearly as much work as like in the old days when we had to do a lot of sanding and a lot of fairing. This peel ply is amazing stuff and saves a lot of work. And out here in the middle, 
it's so much better now to have everything already completed that was done in the shop and having this panel pre-made for me rather than me fiberglassing all this center area and sanding and fairing it has saved me days of work and a lot of valuable labor time with two-part primer and two-part white paint oh it's so hard not to keep going with that white paint roller on the rest of this cockpit but its day will be coming for the final coat on the walking surfaces of this cockpit floor i mixed up a little fine sand in the paint and then rolled that around so i think we're in pretty good shape now certainly our feet are going to stay a lot drier on that forward end of the cockpit if you like the video give us a thumbs up comment down below leave a tip in the tip jar and share this with all your friends